Hello and welcome to this little video about our new asset, the Nimbus Mount, where I will teach you how to change the character. Right now, in this project, I'm using the game mode. Let's press play. And if I press F, then I can ride around the Nimbus. And if I press F again, then I dismount it. So, what I wanted to do is use this Sun Wukong character from the Paragon game and let's let's see it already has these animations and what we need to do is just well add some things in order to for it to work so let's start first let's open that character blueprint here it is and also let's open the in inside the nimbus you will find the Nimbus folder when you download it. And here there will be Blueprints and the Nimbus Rider. You will find that this input that I already added it. Yep, there it is. I already added it. You just need to copy and paste these events. And also add this component. Right now, you you don't need to change anything in this component. So here in Sun, Sun Wukong, in the Sun, Sun Wukong character, yes, add component, search for the rider, Nimbus rider component. Now we have the component that makes it possible to use the Nimbus. And let's copy and paste this code. And enable calling mount. For now, let's do nothing. Confirm. Because it will be created, so let's not worry too much about it. Enable calling mount. It's already created here, so let's call it again. Compile. Enable calling mount. There it is. It's this custom event. It seems that when you copy and paste, you run into that little error, but not to be worried. And this is a warning because of this input. Let me just delete it so we don't get a, a warning. So now with this code copied, let's play. Now, if I press F, it will jump. And it will be able to use the the mount. Where we what we're not seeing is the animations, and it's because it uses custom animations in order for our rider to lean forward and to the sides, right? So, but it, it's already looking pretty good. You see that um, whenever I mount the Nimbus. It did a little jump. Yeah, we can increase that jump in order for it to look better. So here, in the character movement on the Sun Wukong character, let me search jump. Jump velocity, let's put it to 600 because I believe that's the number this one has. Yes, it is. And now play. F, yeah, and it's a little weird because we're not using our blueprint, our animation blueprint. Here on our Nimbus uh, folder, we have an animation folder and also we can find the blueprint, the animation blueprint. You can double click see how we're doing things and uh, let's see how it's been used and i believe this is a previous version because i think i cleaned this up otherwise i'm gonna update the package but this is it this is the code 
that drives if the character is riding a, a vehicle, in this case our mount, forward lean and right lean. And in the anim graph, in the state machine, I added a riding nimbus. So whenever we're riding the nimbus, riding by the vehicle, then it changes, right? We can uh, do our own logic. This is the logic I have I have provided for you guys. It works pretty well. And now we just need to go to our new character. In this case, it should already have a animation blueprint. Animation blueprint. Let's find it. Open it, and you will find that there there is a lot of stuff, right? And where is even the locomotion state machine? It would be a thing, a, a, a simple step to add our riding nimbus somewhere here, and we will test it in order for it to work properly. But we need the animations, so we will retarget them. Now, I'm going to retarget this whole animation blueprint because I don't really want to go and retarget each animation one by one. So how do, do we do this? Let's make sure, let's go to the skeleton and it's easier if I show it like this, uh, untitled, go here, the Nimbus folder, animations, select any animation, let's say this one, and go to the skeleton. Here we need to set up the rig, it's pretty easy, just select humanite rig, save, and there it is, it's ready for retargeting. Now we need to retarget to make the other character ready for retargeting. So let's go to the Sun Wukong. Any animation could do. In this case, I'm in the animation blueprint. So it will also work this little shortcut to click the skeleton. Now, uh, skeleton tree, if you don't have this tab of retarget manager, you can find it in window and retarget manager. It seems there is already a retarget, which is really nice in this case. If you don't have a retarget setup, you just use the select humanoid rig and it should work for you. If your character is being is using the epic skeleton or a skeleton similar with the the same names. Right, in this case, this retarget is already done for us, so it should be fine. What we really need to take in consideration is that the pose need to be pretty similar. So let's check where the pose is. And yeah, I can, let me put it side by side. You can say that it's pretty similar. So because the pose is really similar, we don't need to change anything. If your pose is different, then it becomes uh, an issue. So the way you would need to change it is you can view pose here. And you can see this changes a little bit. And what changes? Oh, the, the stuff. You can view the pose and start changing, modifying the bones and it's not letting me, oh, skeleton tree. You can show the characters, bones or hier hierarchy and it's not letting me change the pose because it's using this already asset. And here now it lets me change the pose right so you just need to make sure that the poses match with this mannequin in my case it, it already matches so 
let's not worry too much about it. When you make it match, then modify pose and use current pose. This makes it so the 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 character will use the modified pose for retarget. So now with this setup, we can go to Nimbus animations and to the animation blueprint. We can retarget it animation like one by one, retarget anim asset, duplicate and etc. And you select the, oh, it's not here. So if it is not there, then I have a problem. So let's clear this select humanoid rig. It, it is using the same naming convention of the Unreal Skeleton. So I will not have a problem here. Otherwise I will need to select each bone for to make it match, right? Maybe your hand is called another thing. Then you have to make it match. It takes a while, but it's really necessary. Let's view the pose. The pose, it, it's still correct. So that's, that's great. So now we should be able to right click on any animation asset, retarget, duplicate. And the, here it is, the Wukong skeleton. Uh, like I said, I will retarget the whole animation blueprint. Let me save it. Right click it, retarget, duplicate, and Wukong skeleton. Let's change the folder just so it doesn't all get created on the content folder. And inside Paragon Wukong, I'm going to create a new folder called retargeted animations. Okay. And let's press retarget. Let's see the retargeted animations. Did I press retarget let me do it again because I don't, I'm not seeing the assets let's change the folder retarget animations and retarget there it is you will find the the animations has, have been retargeted we should have a blend space where you will find our animations working and let me hide the bones. And it has retarget correctly. If for some reason you're having trouble with the arms or the legs, you just need to go here to your to your character. In this case this one is the Wukong one. On, in the skeleton tree, go to options, show retargeting options. The root, you can set it to um, animations, the pelvis to animation scaled, and all the other ones to a skeleton. In this case, it's working really fine, even though I didn't change any of it. But you should change, for example, all, all the other stuff. Right click, recursively set to a skeleton. And in the case of I case, that should be at the end, the I case should be set recursively to animation. So root, animation, pelvis, animation scaled, and the other ones to a skeleton except the eye case, which they are also animation scale. Great, but it's already working fine, so I don't need to touch anything here. And it works fine because it just uh, has the almost the same proportions. So that's great. Let's save everything, save all. And I don't want to change to save the untitled map, so let's cancel that. And now, if we press play, we will still experience that it's not working, right? And that's because we haven't told it to use our animation blueprint. So let's tell it to use it. Let's find this character and let's 
find here the animation Nimbus Rider that is using that character. Let's go to Wukong animation and let me close this. And this one, this, this. Yeah, this is the animation blueprint. This is the Nimbus Rider. And this is my character blueprint. I will click on the mesh and here in the animation class, I'm going to select the one that I already have selected it. Nimbus Rider. This one. So let's press play. And it will not be using the, the normal animation. It will use the third person character. But it should be able to use the riding stance and everything else. Now, we want to use both, right? We want to use... Uh, let me change this one to the Wukong one. And where is it? Here it is. We want to use these cool animations and also be able to ride it. So let's change a little bit of the animation blueprint. You will probably need to copy and paste the code in the event graph on the other animation blueprint. So let's animation blueprint Nimbus Rider. We don't need that this because this would probably be handled by the other blueprint. Only this part of the code is what we need for it to work. So let's copy it. This one sets the is riding vehicle, forward lean and right lean. And let's paste it at the end. See, there, here it is, the is in air, set speed, etc., full body. If you don't know if you're going to mess up something in your animation blueprint, you can also set up a sequence. You can set this up as a sequence. So this will be at one side. And after all the other code has run, then we can run our code that sets up the needed variables. These three variables are not created. Let's just right click and create the variables. Compile it, save it. Now we have variables that will be driven by the actions the character do. So let's go to the locomotion in the in, excuse me, to the anim graph and search. In this case, uh, it should probably be on either on ground locomotion or on locomotion. I'm going to take a guess. I, I didn't do this before. So I'm going to guess that it's here on locomotion because we have a jump and, and, and if we see the Nimbus Rider blueprint in our animation graph, we have a riding Nimbus and it goes from the jump loop to, to it because you can jump and it can enter that animation. So we can check it out. Let's press play, for example. Right now the jog is active. If we jump, I'm not seeing it active. Ah, oh, there it is. I just needed to select this one. And now when it jogs, it goes there. And when I jump, it goes there. So yeah, it's probably this state machine. What I'm gonna do is copy copy this one. Can I copy that? No, oh, that's great. I didn't know you can do that. Let's double click it. There is a blend space here, but it will not be the one that we need to use. Let's change it to here in our asset browser. It will be all the animations that this character can use. So, and I'm going to select the Nimbus Rider one because this one is the, the third person character manic. So let's delete it and make it work like this great compile now with this new state you will be able to start connecting the behavior so if you are idle and you want to write the nimbus then you can 
it seems you can do it. So let's do it like this. You should be able to also stop uh, riding the Nimbus and go directly to the idle. And also, if you are in the air, if you are jumping, you should also be able to go to the riding Nimbus state and go back if you are you stopped riding in the air. And now we just need to set up the same conditions that there are here in the in the animation blueprint that we provide, right? So is riding vehicle. I can copy and paste this, I believe. Yep, because this exact variable has this exact name. Let's compile. Locomotion, this return rule. What did I put here? Is in error. If there isn't that variable, there, there, there will be probably something really similar. Here it is, is in error. Then I'm going to replace it by dragging and dropping on top of it. And we need to add these other transition rules. So what do I need to do? Oh, well, what do, does it need to happen for the riding Nimbus to, to go to the jump? Probably to stop riding the, be the vehicle. But let's check just in case. And let's copy this. And put it like that. And I'm making sure that it is in the air. So we can play the jump animation again. Uh, hopefully it plays the jump loop, but uh, let's see how it looks. And the last transition rule should be this one. It's right in the vehicle. And let's paste it here. And there it is. Compile, save. Let's play it. Now let's press F to write it. And now we are using the animations that, that we have given you while we're riding the, the Nimbus. And also, when you dismount it, we are using the normal animation of this character. So, I hope that this was useful to you guys. And any questions, any topics, you can leave them in the comments below below and also in our discord server take care and see you next time